So Daddy P tells me you're stuck trying to pick a class. Oh, don't be scared, friend. He has eyes and ears everywhere. It's all according to his keikaku. Keikaku means plan. Anyway, he sent me here to help you. But between you and me, I'm probably not the absolute best person for it. I'm not an expert on every single job out there. But you know what? I have leveled almost all of them to 90. Can you guess what I got to show for it? That's right. Opinions. Possibly of the bad variety, but I'm confident that at the end of this video, you're gonna be able to look back and say, yeah, those were definitely some opinions. But first, a little disclaimer to help guide you through this video. One, in all seriousness, nothing I say can be completely objective. I mean, I could be objective by only talking about their spells and skills in depth, but I don't think that helps people choose a class. Generally, people are interested in how a job plays, not the rotational details that they'll have to learn in-game anyway. So while you can take this with a grain of salt if you want, I am right on the edge of being a filthy casual. So I think my perspective is as close to a sprout as a veteran can possibly get. Two, the visuals in this video are not a representation of the actual job rotation, but more of a skill and spell showcase. Only use the rotations you see in this video if you've gone completely feral and want to be reported for griefing. And finally, number three, remember that the best method of choosing a job is picking the one that looks fun to you. You're not gonna like the game if you pick a job based on what some stupid cringe lord said on the internet, so all other advice comes second to your own vibe check. Also, I'm gonna put two terms I'll be using up on the screen, so pause here if you want or need to read it. Otherwise, if you don't care or you already know a bit about MMOs, let's get right to it. Tanks. This is the role you want if being insanely overpowered is your ultimate fantasy. Let me kill one common myth that stops sprouts in their tracks. Tanking in this game is not hard. Maybe it is in other games, but it's definitely not in this game. Taking aggro is as easy as turning on your tank stance and hitting one AoE. Bam! All the enemies hate you now. Tanking is extremely approachable, and it's also very forgiving. If a DPS can only afford to make two mistakes before dying, you can make three times that amount and literally shake it off. In fact, it's so easy that most of the time you'll be pulling several mob packs because enemies just don't deal enough damage to make you feel alive otherwise. So make sure your gear isn't broken before any duty and keep your eye on the party to check that you're going at the pace that everyone seems to want. Paladin is for people who like the Holy Knight aesthetic or people like me who simply couldn't stop themselves from simping for Link as a child. It goes through a physical and magic damage phase, and as of 6.0, it has incredible self-healing built into its core rotation. They have situational utility that isn't often needed, but can be a run saver when it is. Out of all the others, they probably fit the role of pure tank the best. They've got strong defensive cooldowns, and they fit the aesthetic of protecting the party well, with skills like fluency, intervention, cover, and passage of arms. The high-level rotation can be a bit tricky to learn for a completely new player, but it starts off very simple and lets you get used to skills as you level up. Just like a white knight, he starts gentle. I'd say you should pick this if you like a bit of complexity and the idea of helping the party when needed sounds fun for you. Warrior has an Oonga Boonga reputation, but real Sigmas know that going anime-style berserk and out of control is just as edgy as having your own shadow. Fitting with this aesthetic, they press a button, go crazy, and this magically allows them to auto-crit. Game logic. It's easy to pick up and learn in a short period of time, and they have insanely good self and party healing to the point where they don't often need a healer at max level. They're also strong in the defensive cooldown department though, with plenty of options for tank buster mechanics. As a caveat, it does have the lowest DPS of all tanks currently, but the difference between each tank is so marginal that it doesn't change the fact that this job is very powerful. Maybe even too powerful. Don't let the warrior mains hear me say that. I'd say this is a good choice if you like being self-sufficient and you value simplicity in your gameplay. Dark Knight is the misunderstood a teenager of the bunch with deaf parents that just don't understand them. Like Paladin, it also deals magical damage, but they have no cast times to speak of because they're afraid they'll look stupid by just standing there casting. This job received some good changes in 6.1, making it more approachable to new players and giving veterans the strongest sense of euphoria since the release of Female Viera. If your main selling point is dark aesthetics, they've got tons of that packed into this job, and damn is it sick. Their rotation is similar to, but a bit more difficult than Warrior as they have several off-global cooldowns to handle. Unlike Warrior though, they're not very blessed in the realm of self-healing or defensive cooldowns with far less options than any other tank. In exchange for these flaws, they do currently have the best DPS of all tanks. So I would pick this job if you like to deal big damage and the difficulty curve doesn't turn you off from tanking as a whole. To round off the tanks, we have Gunbreaker, a fast-paced heavy hitter that's great for either rabbit squirrels or caffeine addicts. It has the second highest DPS of all tanks because it just presses its buttons hard 
smarter than anyone else. Why didn't the other jobs think of that? Their cartridge system gives them access to special moves that are guaranteed to boost your serotonin levels. Now, I'll be honest and say I don't think this job is extremely approachable to new players, especially if it's your first time tanking. The rotation is fun and enjoyable to learn, but can be punishing when trying to manage defensive cooldowns on top of it. But don't let that discourage you. The base rotation is very simple in and of itself, so it's just a matter of planning your defensive cooldowns, of which Gunbreaker has plenty. Their self-healing isn't as good as Warrior or Paladin, but it's still noticeable and gives them considerable self-sustain. And also, let's be honest with ourselves, their aesthetic is absolutely banger. Choose this if you like to go sonic speed and you like a good balance between defensives and self-healing. Healers, this is the perfect role for you if the idea of trying the Carolina Reaper fills you with ecstasy. Or your main goal in life is to solve everyone else's problems but never your own. Once again, don't be intimidated by the support title. Much like tanks, healing is very approachable in this game and forgiving. Heal potency is very high and the outgoing damage is weak, so you have a wide margin for error. The goal of healers is not to heal so much as it is to keep the party alive and deal as much damage of their own as they can. 6.0 made this even easier with the shorter cast times, meaning they can weave on every single DPS cast. As for cons, they really don't have much in the way of a DPS rotation, so if that's important to you, I suggest rolling tank or arranged. The balancing act between healing and DPSing comes together with practice, and because the game is designed to be friendly to new players, you'll have plenty of time to get the hang of things. White Mage is the pure healer that uses water, earth, wind, and holy magic. Just kidding, you're only going to get holy and water magic at level 90. Hey, <laughs> I had you there. One of its strengths is that its base toolkit is very potent, so when things go to hell in a handbasket, White Mage can usually bring things back from the brink of death. Their spammable AoE, Holy, has a stun connected to it, which makes it convenient for dungeon runs. They also have a unique skill, Presence of Mind, that allows them to go even further beyond. They don't have many off-global cooldowns, but they do have the Lily system. It lets you save up to three strong heals at any given time, either single target or AoE. And it unlocks a Flatus Misery at the end, which is a big damage spell that gives back the DPS you lost from healing. So you're basically a Karen who constantly comes around asking for a refund. I'd say you should pick this job if it's important for you to be able to heal from the get-go and you like seeing big numbers pop up on the screen. Scholar is a pet job shield healer and a walking r slash I am very smart post. It requires you to keep an eye out for your fairy and properly position her so the heals can actually reach the party. But hey, in exchange for the hassle, you have a pet that can do a huge portion of the healing for you. This is where the green DPS meme comes from and Scholar mains are probably tired of hearing it for eight years. Their main healing mechanic is the ether flow system which keeps their MP stable in a split between healing abilities and energy drain, a DPS skill that you use if healing is needed. They have good utility with a crit booster and a party-wide sprint. They do have more to learn compared to White Mage, but it isn't too difficult once you get used to it. One drawback is that they aren't quite as good at recovery when things go wrong, as their base heals aren't very potent. But Scholar is still a competent job and can do a great deal when in the right hands. You should pick this job if you enjoy pet management and you want to provide utility without as much hassle as the Astrologian card system has. Astrologian is not to be mistaken with a person who dumped you because your Virgo vibes were too exhausting. They have a simple card management system that buffs the DPS of other party members. Connected to the cards is the seal system, which can buff their own MP regen, speed, or DPS depending on if you collect all three. Gotta catch them all, am I right? But all this utility doesn't mean they're a slouch in the healing department. They have an answer for any mechanic or fight. Need a regen? No worries! It's part of my kit! Need a shield? Oh sure! Let me just use my OP ability neutral set that somehow survived the 6.0 purge! MP regen? Yeah, yeah! It's tied to my entire kit! Need to heal a difficult mechanic? Macro Cosmos, baby! They sound like they have it all, and they kinda do. But this can be a very fast-paced job when played at a high level, particularly for the average controller user. It's doable, but definitely has a learning curve. They can be a bit clunky, but they're an extremely strong healer packed full of party utility. So if you enjoy a challenge and this is a mountain you want to climb, it's a good one to choose. Sage is the new shield healer with the most confusing name to aesthetic ratio in the entire game. My running theory is that it's just an acronym for Surgeons Always Gank Enemies. It's fast-paced and similar to Scholar, it has automatic healing built into its kit, which does require you to be continuously DPSing in order to keep it active, but hey, you're gonna be doing that on every healer anyway. It has tons of off-global cooldowns and even has a gap closer, making it the first healer with a unique self-movement option. Its gauge functions similarly to White Mage's Lily system and is tied to its NP Restore, which can admittedly suffer a bit when no healing is needed. They don't have any party utility save for their massive off-global cooldown healing kit, but this job is 
was fun to learn anyway. Mostly because lasers make my inner nine-year-old go sicko mode. Pick this job if you have prior experience healing in an MMO and you want slightly more DPS options than the other healers have. Casters! Now this may come as a shock, but they cast spells and deal magical damage. The obvious benefit is that they don't need to be in melee range to deal damage. Every caster is easy to understand at a basic level, and they provide more DPS than the range classes while having decent mobility themselves with their unique skills and slide casting. Still, they will have to sacrifice some mobility, and being forced to cancel a cast you'd almost finish just to dodge an AoE can trigger the old gamer rage. So they benefit from good positioning and situational awareness. First off is Summoner, a pet class that has recently received a massive tummy tuck and facelift. This is the most approachable job in the entire game, as the base rotation isn't complex and goes at a moderate to slow pace. They have good utility in the form of a battle race and searing light, which is a party-wide small DPS buff. They're extremely mobile, with the bulk of their cast being instant, making them reach ranged levels of mobility most of the time. Expectedly, though, they do have the least DPS of all the casters. Unlike Scholar, their summons will handle themselves for the most part, so positioning isn't as much of a priority. They're also extremely flashy. Are you seeing this shit? It's almost distracting. In fact, it is distracting. This is the only job that lets other players use a command to make your pets smaller. Even though this is an easy class, sometimes easy can still be pretty enjoyable, particularly when you're just starting out and learning. Pick this job if you're new to the MMO genre, or you like to focus more on boss mechanics rather than rotational mechanics. Red Mage is the French job of the series with memes that make me very homicidal. And yes, I am slightly ashamed of that one. Other than that, though, it's a fun job that varies between being moderate to fast-paced with a simple rotation that's easy to understand at a glance. It's mobile, not as much as Summoner, but its dual cast mechanic makes every other spell instant. They have a melee combo with their sword, and it's pretty flashy. Actually, the entire job is prime aesthetic real estate. They have good DPS, and their main mechanic, the white and black mana gauge, is very forgiving. It also has a ton of utility, with a battle raise, a decent healing spell, a party-wide DPS buff, and a magic defense and heal-boosting shield. Honestly, they don't have many flaws, though they can be caught in a bad situation movement-wise if you don't manage your cooldowns properly. This is a great job if you want the best of both worlds on the casting and melee front, and you love being able to assist the party in virtually any way it could need. Black Mage is the OCP's golden child, and its design reflects that blatant favoritism. Their aesthetic is fire, ice, thunder, and void magic, so it's great for people who are edgy but aren't quite ready to take that leap into Reaper just yet. It has the best DPS of all casters and can outdo most melees, but it has no utility and the least movement options of all casters in exchange. Still, there are no slouch in that department, as triple cast stacks give them great mobility when used well. The trick of this job is positioning so that you move as little as possible, because these cast arms can take a hot second compared to, say, Summoner. This is where the healer adjust meme comes from. I'll be honest and say I don't think this job is super approachable to someone who's new, as all the movement cost from learning mechanics could be pretty frustrating with cancelling casts left and right. My suggestion is to play this job if you're looking for a challenge and you have prior experience with MMOs. Home on the range, a role for people who need to keep their distance from the boss so they're not destroyed by its massive chad energy. This is the home of the utility and maximum mobility squad, unless you're a machinist, but they'll have to wait their turn. Every range class is pretty simple, if from no other perspective, then the gist of this rotation is easy to understand. It's a forgiving role for beginners because you move as much as you want. Your main advantage is that your DPS stays the same whether the boss is 20 feet away or right on top of you, and you can maintain that even in situations where you're forced to be on the move. Casters could never. I mean, other than Summoner. Because of your utility, everyone's happy to see you in the dungeon. And the main con is, you have the lowest personal damage of all the DPS roles, but with the ability to hop around the entire arena, who really cares, right? Bard is the OG ranged role and is definitely not suffering an identity crisis with its archer roots. Their gameplay is on the more fast-paced side, with lots of proc-heavy mechanics that can have you double weaving here and there. They have three songs to maintain, and each one does something different that gives Bard a somewhat more unique playstyle than the others. What's more, their songs are constantly buffing the party. That means Bard is singing and singing arrows and moving while dealing with mechanics. What an icon. The rotation itself isn't too difficult. Any problems you face will probably be related to not being able to use procs on time without clipping your GCD. This is a job that starts out very easy and has a natural progression towards getting more complex. Pick this if you like your job to grow with you, so to speak, and having unique methods of party support sounds essential to you. Dancer is a role popular with cat girls who idle in Limsa Lamensa. Wonder why that is. Anyway, other than Summoner, this is an approachable and easy job that I can happily recommend to newcomers. Their primary buffing mechanic is the dance partner Tether, the 
strongest DPS buff in the game. They can pick one single DPS as their partner at the beginning of an instance and not really need to worry about it after. But wait, there's more, along with heals and a defense boosting skill. Its mobility may be the best of all jobs because of its three dash charges, which lets it escape bad situations in a second. On top of all that, the changes in 6.1 have only made this job easier. It's not ridiculously flashy, but it's fun to look at, and it fills its dancing aesthetic well. I'd recommend it to players who want a simple DPS job that's got more utility than Summoner. Machinist is a role that wields abominations that should never be called guns. It's considered the selfish range DPS that's meant to have the most damage in the role, while boasting much less utility compared to the others. Its pace ranges from very fast, with lots of moments where you need to weave in off global cooldowns, to slowing down considerably when the cooldowns are running. They've got a high-tech aesthetic that stretches out to more than just guns, as they also have turrets, drills, flamethrowers, bioblasters, automaton queens, and a chainsaw. Though this job is potentially a serial killer that has an aesthetic you're not going to find anywhere else in the game. One drawback is that this job is heavily punished for bad ping, so take that into consideration if you live far from your server. It's not the most approachable job, but it's definitely doable. I'd suggest playing this if you'd like to be highly mobile and you're not too concerned with the utility aspect of the ranged role. Ah yes, the world of the melee is a heavily populated one indeed. It's easy to see why, as they tend to look sick as fuck and have higher DPS potential than most of the jobs from other roles. It's all about the big numbers, baby. They also have higher survivability with DPS gear that has the best defensive stats out of the bunch. They all have good utility, save for samurai, which I'll talk about more later. Their rotations, on average, can be a little bit more complex, but they're still not too bad once you get the hang of it. Their main drawback is pretty easy to guess. They have to stay in melee range to maintain their DPS, and it can take time to get the exact spacing for max melee range down to a T. These classes may take a while to master, but rest assured that it's very possible, even if you're new. Dragoon is a wonderfully flashy job that's haunted by its past of being a floor tank, which isn't really deserved, because all melees spend time tanking the floor, and it doesn't deserve to be singled out like that. It has a busy rotation with lots of off-global cooldowns to weave, but the 6.1 changes have helped fix some of the animation luck issues attached to the jumps. For a starting class, it's honestly not the most approachable if you're starting from level 80, but if you're planning to go from level 1, it has a natural progression of ramping up the difficulty bit by bit. It has average mobility with a few jumps that can close the distance and a backwards jump that has caused some memes to occur. It has great utility with a DPS boosting tether and a party-wide crit buff at its disposal. My main complaint with this job is that they'd be better off with cone AoEs rather than line AoEs, but it's not hard to get used to. I'd pick this job if you love the aesthetic and you like the feeling of always having something to do in your rotation. Ninja is the masochist of the DPS group that likes to be publicly humiliated for messing up its rotation. Yes, if you mess up the Mudra mechanic, the devs have decided the entire party should be able to know. So this job isn't for you if you don't like wizard bunnies. Because of that, you'll need to memorize a few different combinations for Mudra, but it's very easy to pick up and memorize quickly. It has a speed buff that it needs to maintain, so it's a fast-paced job. Mobility-wise, it's not too bad, with Shikuchi that requires you to ground target to move, which, once again, can be a pain for controller users, but it can also maintain a bit of uptime with their Mudras, so some can be cast from afar. This job isn't the most approachable of all or anything, but it's still not too difficult to pick up and do decent numbers with. This job is a good choice if you're okay with a bit of memorization and having slight range potential on your melee sounds good to you. Monk proves that being loyal to Buddha isn't about how much you can meditate. It's about how hard you can punch a cat girl directly in their sinful adventurer plate. Recently, it received an overhaul of this expansion, so lots of things are different from before. They have good utility in the form of brotherhood, and because it comes with a built-in speed buff, it's decently fast-paced. While they do have all global cooldowns to deal with, they're not as reliant on them as some jobs are. They've got good mobility with three stacks of gap closer, which is necessary because this job is punished the most when you need to keep distance from the boss. They have high DPS, and while this job's rotation did confuse me at first glance, I realized how simple it was during the short leveling process. If even an idiot like me can do it, you'll be fine. Pick this job if you like to do big numbers and DBZ is your favorite enemy. Reaper is the spoiled brat of the melee DPS that gets anything it wants because it's the new born baby. But I mean, don't take me as bitter or anything, this is a really fun job to play, and everyone and their mom's dog likes it. It has a simple rotation, and I'd say it's the most approachable melee by a good bit. This is partly because it has very few off-global cooldowns compared to the other melee. It plays at a moderate speed, with some fast-paced moments in their edgy avatar form, but it's all very manageable. Their AO 
mobility rotation is also insanely satisfying and looks cool as hell. It has good mobility with ingress and is the only melee that can cast spells from a distance. Its utility is great, with arcane circle buffing damage and arcane crest putting a potent regen on the entire party when broken. Don't ask me how a reaper is healing people, I choose not to think about it. Because of how simple and fun this job is, I highly recommend it to any new players who want to try melee, or just people who want to experience a rewarding gameplay loop. I would say that samurai is the job for weeaboos, and I would be correct, but it goes a bit deeper than that. Samurai is for degenerate weeps. Normal weeps should go back to ninja where they belong. Fair warning that it's also received some very controversial changes that may be reverted, so please note that the experience may be different soon. Anyway, samurai is a moderate to fast-paced job that needs to maintain a DPS and speed buff to do maximum damage. Its sense system lets it use three unique EI jutsus, which are all good for different situations and will always crit. They have the kinky gauge, which is used for your mobility, which is a backstep and a gap closer. Other than that, you mostly use kinki to spam a filler DPS move called shinthen. It's relatively approachable and easy to understand, meaning you can pull good numbers with this job without 100% knowing what you're doing. In exchange for having the best melee DPS, it has no utility to speak of, so when things go south, samurai kinda just has to shrug. Because it might get reworked soon, I can't outright recommend it to new players until at least 6.2, but if you're determined to try it out, I'd recommend it to players who value high numbers and only want to focus on their own damage, and would rather let the rest of the party do their own thing. And we also have blue ma- wait, holy shit, I already did every valid job. Man, I truly got lost in the 19 job sauce. I'm not sure if anything I said made sense, but if nothing else, I hope you're a little bit closer to jumping into Eorzea with the same confidence of a neckbeard who immediately chooses to play a cat girl and never thinks twice. Have a wonderful day. And may Yoshi P have mercy on your soul.